Hey guys, I'm uh, Luke from Recovery Force and uh, uh, I've got this Western Digital Drive taken out of uh, a MyBook Essential and uh, um, yeah, I'm going to use my Stabilizer 10G to interface with this drive and uh, um, one of the challenges is, is that uh, this particular drive um, will obviously have the uh, built-in uh, encryption with Western Digital. So if we try to clone it with uh, software, uh, we're just going to get encrypted sectors to the destination and uh, then we'll have to figure out how to uh, decrypt it. But uh, uh, I seem to recall that UFS Explorer uh, now uh, has recently uh, introduced uh, um, the decryption abilities so I figured this would be a good chance to give it a try so what we're going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to come up to the uh, window here and first thing is I'm on stabilizer I've got it on the uh, SATA channel and I'm going to power the drive on and uh, wait patiently for the drive to spin up if we go to the sector map side we can see the voltage is reading fine so we've got some the voltages are all good. We'll go back here, look at the full details of the drive, down to the serial number and everything else. So with the new FS Explorer, let's first things first, refresh. And uh, now we see the, uh, the, new, the drive. So the next step is, is we're gonna create a task. We're gonna go to, to disk imaging, do disk imaging task. Sorry about really not doing good with this uh, director's view, but bear with me. New disk imaging task, we're going to do um, this source is to do, do, do where is it here? There you are. There's our drive. We're going to do on-demand disk imaging. And click OK. And from there, we're going to choose home to another drive. Choose the Seagate three terabyte drive. Target location one one three. That's good. Create task. Create the task. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, so there we have. Now this is a new imaging task. So every sector we touch, um, we'll pull from the source and write to the clone at the same time. Uh, but first things first, what we want to do is up under the disk uh, tools, I found this uh, drive bridges security. And if I hit, oh, it does it automatically here. So if we see the removable for the image, either one I think should probably work fine. Uh, but this is the one we're working with. So we want to have that one selected um, and choose open. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. So now it went from storage partition to NTFS partition. So in theory, we can uh, save disk image. Image, specific save. Oops, I should probably run in this window. Uh, perform, that's a specific to use. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. We just want to uh, see what happens here. From here, I'm not sure what I'm doing, so uh, uh, if I figure it out, I will continue on. Okay, so um, I did a quick scan of the the partition here. Right click, quick scan, and then I brought up this. I've uh, shrunk it down so you don't see the uh, file tree of the customer's files. Uh, but uh, from here, um, you can right click, ah, save image of use space, and from here we can just leave the default settings, and then just click start imaging. Uh, I usually go with the synchronous by this imager, click OK, and then we can watch it uh, go through with. Uh, UFS imaging the drive. Um, seems to be going pretty smooth here. Um, something we could do is if we want to, um, you can pause the imaging. And I found that this has been relatively stable. You can change it from ATA to different 
connections uh, but you can also change the uh, configuration so if you want to go for a bigger uh, block size for reading uh, oops. Uh, okay you can change your configurations for you know imaging passes uh, click OK and then if we just click click continue now those that's the configuration for uh, this task here the quick imaging so if I wanted to change configuration of something else I could go to normal and then go back and made make changes as well so there's basically you can go back and keep changing them so cancel but we'll, we'll leave it at uh, the quick imaging because I think it's fine uh, click resume and uh, sure enough seem to be getting a fairly decent transfer rate is using um, UFS to uh, both create an imaging task and to clone a Western Digital drive that is uh, encrypted uh, doing the decryption access. Uh, this way we're only imaging the targeted data. Theoretically you probably could have uh, imaged the whole drive first uh, and then we could go back and uh, um, uh, just do the decryption and copy the files out without uh, uh, from the clone but uh, I figured this way we're just targeting uh, it's about two terabytes of data so uh, yeah saving us having to image three terabytes so it speeds up the recovery process uh, but that's that and uh, just on a side note uh, what's actually happening in the background is the clone drive is still getting encrypted data to it it's still copying encrypted files or sectors to that drive so if we were to try to access it directly uh, bypassing UFS uh, uh, the uh, encryption uh, routine uh, yeah we'd still be looking at gobbledygook and uh, we'd have to uh, use something to interpret it whether we connect it back to the Western Digital USB bridge or what have you but anyway uh, hope this is helpful and uh, uh, I think uh, it's features like this is makes uh, UFS Explorer, uh, one of the top uh, recovery tools to have, especially if you're uh, uh, using uh, products like uh, DeepSpire USB Stabilizer, uh, 5G or 10G. Uh, yes, I understand that uh, our studio is uh, designed, uh, being designed to work uh, more integrated with it, uh, but uh, uh, they both have their pros and cons, and in this case, we're just showing off the, the UFS Explorer features and uh, how, uh, how smoothly it goes. Anyway, if, if you uh, find this video useful, uh, be sure to click a like and share. Um, and uh, I understand that I really suck at doing this, so uh, be nice in your criticisms. But if you have any feedback that uh, would be helpful to me, uh, I'd be happy to hear. Take care.